have uh, new disc pads on the front of a 2007 Buick Terraza van. It's actually a uh, Braun Ability van, so it's been uh, rigged out for handicap. And uh, one of our relatives, we bought it so that she would have the use of it. So I'm just checking everything out on it to uh, make sure it's okay before we deliver it to her. I did buy it uh, locally uh, from a gentleman and uh, got a pretty good deal on it. Only has 56,000 miles on it. So uh, the, the pads that I'm taking off, just about the end of their life. So uh, we're gonna put a new set of pads on it. Harbor Freight. And I do buy the five millimeters. They make uh, uh, thicker ones than that, but the blue ones seem to be fine. A little, little easier on the price too, okay? What I, I'll also be using is uh, a breaker bar that I bought as well from Harbor Freight, it's Pittsburgh brand. They make another brand that's a little higher price, but uh, a breaker bar is a breaker bar. The way I look at it, it's 25 inch. It's a half inch uh, drive. And you'll notice I've got an adapter here because the uh, bolts that I'm using, I have metric uh, sockets. They're 3 eighths, so I've got a 3 eighths to half inch drive adapter here that I'm using. So I've got that. I'll show you what I do with that here in just a little bit. If the uh, piston is uh, kind of hateful trying to get the piston pushed back, that's one thing you need to do first. You'll notice here what I've done, it's just, I'm just used to doing it. I always loosen the cap on the master cylinder uh, before I start pushing the piston back. Some of the cars, the master cylinder is made with the cap uh, just laying right on the very top. So it doesn't have uh, much room for the fluid. So when you're pushing the piston back, the fluid, it's a closed system. So the fluid's gonna be pushed back and sometimes it would overrun. So I'm just in the habit of, of loosening that cap and, and letting her sit there before I get ready to push the piston back. If I can't get that piston back, uh, and you try to do that before you take the caliper off of the rotor, it's easier that way. But if I can't, what I'll do is go ahead and take the uh, caliper off with the disc pads still installed, and then uh, use this tool that I bought at Harbor Freight. And you, you, you can see, I've never used it yet, because most of the time I've been lucky enough to be able to push that piston back uh, with a screwdriver before I have to do this. But this tool is made so that uh, you can actually put it on the outside of the caliper and put this inside the piston and actually just manually turn that, which forces the piston back up into the caliper so that you get the room. But I'm gonna try not to have to use that. So that's what we've got there. It hasn't been used very often, so everything's pretty much new. And again, it's been well taken care of, so might make it easier on us, but I hope I haven't jinxed myself. So now I'm going from my 3 8 ratchet. There again, got to take my adapter off. So 3 8 to 3 8 now. And I'll remove the caliper bolt. Get the uh, piston back just a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm putting my screwdriver against the back end of the, uh, the disc pad itself, and I'm gonna put a little pressure there. So I'm putting pressure on. And again, being 56,000 miles, I can already see the pistons going back. So this is gonna work. So it's pushed back. Now I'm gonna try to just get my screwdriver in here so that I can, yeah, I've got it. So now if you'll notice, I hope it's not too dark that you can't see it. But I've got her loose there now. And she's gonna push that piston right back up into the caliper. And that's what you want. Push her back till she, uh, Deads out there and just stops. And that's a just about it. The caliper goes right back on it with no problem. If you don't do that, you're gonna think that the, uh, the pads are too big, but they're not. You've gotta push that back first. Okay, so she's back. Now I'll continue to take the uh, caliper bolt out. Move the caliper to there. So now I'll show you what we were talking about. Right there's a piston. And it has a rubber boot on it that seals it for dust and whatever. Sometimes you'll notice you'll be a leak here because it, again, it's a closed system. And if the uh, seal goes bad inside this piston, this will actually leak. You'd have to replace that. But you'll notice this boot's in good shape. And again, it goes back to, it's not very many miles. Real easy. I don't wanna mess up that boot. I'm just gonna fit the outside edge of that piston just to clean it up. And what I'll do here in just a minute, I'm gonna put some uh, brake cleaner on. I'm just gonna let that set. 
And again, it's a good idea to have a coat hanger or something to uh, strap this up so that it's hanging. You don't want that to accidentally drop and uh, mess up your brake hose. But I'm just, right now, I'm just gonna set it right there. She'll be fine. And again, don't worry about getting things wet. This, this evaporates, cleans and evaporates very quickly. That's what it's made to do. It just slides right out. You can see the track here. Just sits in that little track and she comes quite straight out. So there you go. Now you can see your disc pads, either the inboard or the outboard pad. Uh, inboard is this side, outboard is that side. It has a little uh, mechanism on a little, little steel bracket that's actually, uh, we called them back in the old days, just a squeal alarm, but it's it's the uh, protection that you get so that when that pad wears down that far, that metal will start touching the steel on this rotor and start squealing a little bit. And really what it's telling you is, help me, I need some brakes. I need new brakes on this pad. Squish it around a little bit. You got metal to metal contact on the ends where she's sitting in the uh, little carrier there. a little bit you don't have to go crazy with it so i got that pad ready to go and i'll put a little bit here just on the uh, piston itself squeeze a little bit there and just take your finger and move it around it doesn't take much you just want to get a little bit of lubrication on it can't overdo it okay that's ready <laughs> Just uh, get your caliper to go back on. So just place it over the pads and start working it in. What you have to worry about or watch is the rubber boots here. You need to get your caliper going on there, then make sure that you got your boots. So she so slid on it, and I'm making sure that my boot here is is lining up with the uh, caliper bolt hole. Bottom side. So there that's that the caliper is. bolt in that it's going through the boot. You just kind of work with that. There it is. Start that one. Play with it a little bit. Finally, it'll just, there it goes. Goes in. Start it with, with your hand, fingers. Now, just flip your socket around your ratchet. Of course, nug them up. Uh, at the very end, just check your fluid in your master cylinder. And remember to uh, put your cap back on. I can see the fluid, and I've noticed since I put those pads on it, the fluid has come up to the neck. It was below that. So that's telling you there's the difference. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on it. And then I'll do my brake pedal a couple of times. Now see, she went all the way to the floor. Expect that. That's what's going to happen. Now I'm going to, I pressed it the second time. Third time, there she is. Now I'm really putting pressure on it now, so we're good. <laughs> 